Hello IB Environmental students. Today we're going to be doing topic 1.2 system and models. Let's begin. Don't forget that as you're doing your notes you need to make sure you're doing them outline style and if there are really important definitions make sure those important key terms are being bolded or highlighted somewhere in your notes so when you go back to study them it will help you. So here's a good example. System should be bolded or highlighted and then you would want to write down this important IV definition. It's an assemblage of parts and their relationship forming a function in entirety or whole which is really kind of a weird definition but it it means lots of components working together. Lots of components working together. All right, these components in systems can be things that are living, non-living, or theoretical. We even just learned about a theoretical system called the environmental value systems. They can also be like governmental systems or living things like food webs or food chains. Okay. So let's talk about some actual environmental examples. Um, you do not have to write everything on this slide, but I do suggest you write down key summaries of each of the different bullets. So one system we're going to learn about in this class is the atmospheric system. The atmospheric system is approximately a um, 1100 kilometers. Um, it is mostly nitrogen gas, which is weird since we think of it as oxygen. And a lot of our reactions in life occur in that atmospheric system. The hydrospheric system, hydro meaning water, is 71% of the Earth's surface. Don't forget that water is the universal solvent, so a lot of pollutants and useful things are in water. Lithosphere, that's our, our rocks. This is a thin layer that is the crust on which we live on the Earth. The ecosphere is the living things above that biotic and also their abiotic non-living factors that they're interacting with. And if we add up all of those different layers of the earth, we call the, all of them interacting together a bigger system called the biosphere. So each of them is a separate component and also could be thought of a system and when we combine them it's called the biosphere. So when we talk about systems, we're going to talk about them using this key term called holistic. Holistic, according to IB, means we're thinking about a whole wide view. We're considering all components. And that the more components we consider, the more accurate the system will be and will lead us to better predictions. So when we're talking about an ecosystem, we're going to try to think about all the parts, not only the plants, but also the things that eat the plants, not only that, the sun, some of the abiotic things in the system. All right, we could also think similarly, not, if we're talking environmental issues, let's also consider social and economic issues, which is why our class in a science class is slightly different than most science classes, because we are going to talk about the social, the political, and the economic side of things, which is exciting. Um, and if we don't consider this wide whole view called holistic, um, it's less likely we're going to be able to help create solutions to protect the environment. If we only look narrowly, we won't think about everything and we might miss something. If we think widely, a whole view, holistic, we're more likely to protect the environment. So there are three major types of systems we're going to be talking about in this class. Um, and this chart is really useful to help us think about them. Um, our columns here are type of system, the three types there in red. Those are key terms that make sure you want to be really bolded or highlighted in your notes. Um, and when we talk about these systems, we're going to be thinking about is energy coming in and out of them? Is matter coming in and out of them? And what are some examples of that type of system? So an open system is open because both energy and matter are exchanged. So sunlight, for instance, is a type of energy can come in and out. And matter, let's think about that. For example, water is a type of matter. It can come in and out of that system. So almost all living things, including humans, are open systems, right? We take in food, which is matter and energy, and we also excrete it. Um, an aquarium is a really good example of an open system. Water is put in, water is lost, um, energy, light can come in and out of the aquarium, heat can escape the aquarium, which is also energy. Closed systems, on the other hand, 
um, energy can enter, but matter cannot. And we're going to look at a really a, a good example of this in class. Um, living things uh, don't aren't really great at being closed systems because guess what? Um, we need more matter over time. And we're going to learn why that is in our next set of notes. But closed systems don't really occur in nature. We as humans sometimes make them. Isolated systems, um, they don't exchange energy, they don't exchange matter. So when we think of this, we're only thinking about this as the whole universe, right? Because that's like everything. Um, we don't think light is coming in, we don't think more matter is coming in because it's the entire universe. So let's um, check our understanding by actually drawing some visuals. And when we do notes, it's really important that we have visuals in our notes. So this time I'm telling you to draw these charts, but sometimes there's going to be really useful charts, and you just should draw them on your own. So we're going to use a circle. It could have been a box to represent our system. And we're going to use arrows to represent inputs and outputs. So um, here's another one, and here's another one. So arrows going in are inputs, arrows going out are outputs. Notice that some of these have energy and matter on them, and some of them have none. So which of these do you think is our isolated system? Well, remember, isolated is not matter or energy coming in or out. So that's this one, and that our example is the universe. What about the next one down? What about this one? Only energy is coming in or out. That's our closed system. Remember, um, humans um, are an open system. Most things in nature, like ecosystems, are open systems because matter can come in or out. So open is our most common thing we're going to be talking about in class because um, it's the most common thing. <laughs> Um, so notice that those were examples of system diagrams. So here's how we draw a system diagram. Um, they have a couple components that hopefully we saw there. So we can see storages. That was our bigger circle. Sometimes it's most frequently shown as a box, but it could have been a circle. So that was a storage. So in our example, aquarium, the aquarium itself is a storage. Um, then we draw flows, those inputs and outputs, those were arrows, right? So flows, inputs, and outputs are the same exact thing. Notice these bright colored things are our key terms here. Um, inputs go in, outputs go out, and then there's processes, and we're going to be learning lots of processes in our class. Um, and we usually label the top of the arrows with the process. So if we draw a big arrow um, coming out of a plant, we could write that that was photosynthesis. We could write that there is oxygen coming out of the plant, and that would have occurred through photosynthesis. We could draw a cloud and have an arrow going down and saying precipitation, and that's showing what process is bringing that flow. So um, that's really important. But these flows happen for different reasons, all right? And those different reasons are called transfers or transformations. And these are also key terms. So a transfer is just energy or matter purely moving, all right? It's not changing. It's just moving. It's just being transferred. So, for instance, water flowing from um, a river to the ocean. Is the water changing forms? No, it's not. It's just moving. Matter going along the food chain. It's just moving. That carbon is still carbon, okay? So, those are just transfers. Now, transform, think about transformers, right? They're changing shape. They're changing forms. And it has that word form in it. Um, those things are going to change states. Now, states of matter, remember, are like changing from liquid to gas or the other way around and so forth. But they also could be energetic changes. So in photosynthesis, we're taking light energy, solar energy, and it's being converted into chemical energy in the form of sugar inside the plant, right? So that's a change in form. Precipitation, gas to liquid, transform, all right? And so... When we're doing all these things and we're drawing these models, there could be different types of these models, right? So we could have a physical model. You could actually build an aquarium or uh, even in a jar. And some of you guys might decide to do that for an experiment this year. Or you could, you could actually look physically at a river and that's a, a system, right? 
Um, but some people are really computer savvy and they make systems on the computer, especially when we're thinking about climate change. A lot of those are on the computer, those systems. Uh, and then we did a couple examples today in the notes of an actual data flow diagram. For instance, a food web is a data flow diagram. So lots of types of systems exist, but some of them are better than others and the best kind are going to be the following. So this word evaluate means talk about pros and cons, advantages and disadvantages. So let's do that really quick and this is our last bit. An advantage of doing a system, right, it's going to help us make predictions. It's going to give us data and it's going to allow policymakers in government and in businesses and so forth, they're going to be able to use that data from scientists to inform the public to make decisions. So systems and these models are really important for us to make those decisions. The unfortunate part is all systems and those models of them are not perfect. They all are going to have some limitations because really we're simplifying real life. And when we simplify real life, we lose some stuff. Um, the more complicated, the more accurate, and the more holistic, the more accurate, but it's never going to be perfect. And that's going to be a big thing for this class. So you made it through your own set of notes. I'm really proud of you. I hope you kept them organized and I hope you could see your big important key terms. All right. See you guys in class.